Okay. okay. So uh, I call this the spirit of Scrum. And the spirit, the spirit of Scrum, yes, well, I say this because I think Scrum has a, has a body and it has a spirit. You can say it has a body, it has a form, and it has, it has a heart, and it has a form. So using that analogy, uh, we all know a lot about um, Scrum, Scrum's processes and artifacts. But that's the easy part. The rest is the hard part. Trying to capture the spirit of Scrum, trying to try get the heart of Scrum, is actually um, much, much uh, more difficult. And when sometimes when you introduce Scrum to an organization and you're wondering why things aren't going so smoothly, when Scrum the processes and artifacts are actually quite easy, you can explain to someone in about 20 minutes, where the things fail is the cultural transition <coughs> to um, our Scrum values. Not much is known about the Scrum values, they're in the back of these two books. How many people know Scrum values, the five Scrum values? No? Okay, so it's actually not talked about very much. So these are the five scrum values. So commitment, focus, openness, respect, and courage. Now, I want to, I'm trying to avoid doing sort of a touchy-feely talk um, on values and lecturing you on values. So I want to, I'm trying to both get to the, get to, to the real um, source of where these values come from and trying to dig uh, deeper. It's been 25 years since this paper came about. And this is one of the papers that inspires scrum. And in here, I look for uh, what I tried, tried to look for really the heart and the source of, of Scrum. And what I found out was that that paper actually doesn't talk about um, it doesn't talk about uh, processes. It talks about the culture, the culture and the, organ, the type of organization that um, helps you do Scrum. One of the things I found in introducing Scrum is that it is politically threatened. And or, organizationally, it is um, it's 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 it's, a, it's organizationally threat, threatening. And so one of the things on the previous slide was that sometimes you can't, you don't let them know that you're doing Scrum. So one of the values that that shows you're lacking is openness. If you don't feel safe introducing Scrum in an organization, uh, then the organization is probably lacking openness in their in their in their corporate culture. So openness is about exposing exposing your ugliness. So Scrum doesn't solve any of your problems. Scrum just exposes your problems to you. Um, and radiates information and encourages conflict. It won't actually solve your problem. Part of openness is communication. So what we're trying to avoid is this. What we're trying to get to is this. Where everyone moves the ball forward, up, together, and there's, they're in constant communication, and they're not simply passing the, the baton forward. So when you think, um, in, in, in the paper, it, it says that, uh, this is a paragraph that caught, caught my attention, when you start thinking in terms of what's best for, or second best for the group at large, and not only about where you stand, if everyone understands the other person's position, then each one of us is more willing to give in, or at least give, give, it, a, give it a try to talk to each other. To me, that exemplifies openness. The next part is, uh, is respect. So, uh, Scrum allows teams to self-manage and self-organize, and that's the ultimate token of respect that you're giving to the team. To the point where, in the paper, it says if someone from, from development thinks that 100, 100 is good, then it, it, that's a clear sign to go ahead. If someone from production thinks that 1 out of 100 is not good, then we have to start all over. So it gives that authority and respect to each person in the team. It's incredible, and another quote is that it's incredible how the company called young engineers like ourselves to design a car with a totally new concept and, and gives the freedom to suit our way. So that, to me, exemplifies respect. Now, with respect, uh, we'll ra race through this. Um, you need, who here writes crappy code? Really bad code. Yeah, I write bad code, and that's okay, because we fail and we fail quickly, and we have to have the courage in order to, to try things and make mistakes. Um, Honda used to make cars like this, and they had the courage to uh, trust a bunch of junior engineers and make something horrendous like this. And it takes a lot of courage to put something as hideous as that together. And it took three years to do something like that when everybody else was doing this. Um, so you have to have the courage to try something new and fail. And of course, they learned from this. And, you, and, and actually, um, other companies learned from it as well. So this is a quote from the, from the paper. It's like, it's like putting the team members on the second floor, moving the ladder, and telling them to jump or else. This is sounds like a lot of the scrums that, that, that I've been in. So I think we're right on the mark here. Uh, and we're driven to a state of zero information where prior knowledge is not applied. So you get a bunch of people who are not necessarily experts in the field, but together they can achieve something amazing. Now, um, commitment. 
Um, so the next value is commitment. It is, Scrum presupposes that it gives every, every, everyone, everyone it gives the team everything it needs in order to get the job done. That's why we have cross-functional teams. And this quote here uh, describes uh, cross-functional teams in the original in the, in the, in the, in the original um, companies where, where Scrum was was was, was the, the origins of Scrum to be found. A shared division of labor where each team member is responsible, feels feel responsible, and is able to work on, on any, any aspect of the project. Cross-functional teams. If you have cross-functional teams, you get better commitment because people no longer ha have to rely on bottlenecks. They can actually swarm on a problem and alleviate bottlenecks. So commitment can mean two things. Some, in some companies, it can mean emotional attachment to a piece of work. In some companies, it can mean do or die. And if you don't get it done, you're gonna, there's going to be uh, punishments. Now, how, how many people uh, is, it, is, is it more of that? Where it's an emotional attachment to the work. How many people is it more of this, where it's a sense of accountability and real punishments if things are not, 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 not hit? Okay? Now, if you do that, then you're forgetting the whole, the whole point of Scrum, which is um, empirical process control. It's that you need, to have, you need to actually discover what you're going to do. And so commitment, I think, is more of a soft commitment to have emotional attachment. Okay, commitment is conditional on focus. So this is someone focusing. We're probably in, in, in flow. Yeah. Uh, now, Scrum puts everybody into the same room. So how can you achieve flow when everyone's in the same room? So this is a person who's got their headphones on. This person actually had another screen. They didn't turn on their screen because they wanted to focus. That was their intensity of their focus. But you want to co you want to now co-locate, and you you want to um, uh, you want to have the entire uh, focus of the entire team. So you might be doing task switching, but it's all within the context of the of, 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 of the of the of the of the product. So co-locate, but co-locate alone with your team. So uh, that's it, really. The, the, this is what, what, what I've learned from, from, from trying to do Scrum organizations that Scrum process is very easy, and um, 